and for giving us the opportunity, short though it may have been, to spend one last year at Wiley High School. We are grateful for your guidance and protection through this challenging year and are excited for what is to come. For many of us, senior year was far from what we thought it would be. However, we thank you for the blessings that have come during this time. This time has given us the opportunity to create memories with loved ones and family before starting a new chapter of life in the fall. It has been a blessing to be able to see your work at such a time like this, which inspires us all to find the positive in a time full of chaos and confusion. Lord, we ask that you would bless and guide our graduates as we reach the end of high school and move on to what is next in our path of life. Guide us and direct us into the life that you have planned and guard our faith. We ask that you would remind us to serve others in kinship, love unconditionally, and to always seek the greater good. Lord, let us be your hands and feet in what is to come. Finally, Lord, we ask for safety in both these challenging times and our future endeavors. We thank you for those that are helping our nation during this time of need, and we pray for the safety of all. Father, it has been a blessing spending the last years at Wiley, and we ask that you would empower us to walk into the future with faith, hope, and love guided by your light. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. We ask this in your name, in the name of your son. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome students, faculty, family members, and anyone else who is bored enough to watch Baccalaureate online. For those of you who don't know me, not, my name is Austin Petrie, and I'm currently serving as the senior class president at Wiley High School. You know, back eight months ago when I was told that I was supposed to give this speech at baccalaureate, I would have never thought it'd be to a camera in an empty audience. Just a few months ago, we all left for spring break, ecstatic to get out of the school for a week. Yet now, all we want is that one week back. Our lives quickly became a regulated mess of face masks and standing six feet apart. But there were a few things that good that came out of this, such as top-notch memes or a crazy redneck from Oklahoma named Joe Exotic. However, everything from sports to prom to graduation was stripped from us. We lost everything in the blink of an eye, and our lives will forever be changed. Though there was one significant part of my life that was, remained unhindered. During this time of self-isolation and quarantine, I've continued to express my love for the wilderness. Ever since I was a young boy, I've loved to be in the great outdoors, whether it be hunting in exotic places or hiking in the Rocky Mountains or just fishing in a nearby pond. The trials of the wilderness never cease to excite me. And though the outdoors is filled with beautiful creatures and breathtaking views, sometimes the wilderness can take its toll. Sometimes things just don't go our way. You know what? The wilderness is a lot like our lives. This reminds me of a story of a, a buddy of mine I have in South Africa. His name is Johan Seifert, and he's a, he's a guide for big game over there. And he has a dog. It's a, the breed is a Rhodesian Ridgeback, and it's been used to hunt lions and all, all kinds of stuff over there in Africa. Well, one day he was telling me this story about how him and his dog and a couple of other hunters were out hunting and for a kudu bull, and they came up on these large tracks, and the trees were broken all around, and they made the inquisition that it was an elephant herd. So they came to this beautiful open clearing where there were no, not, nothing was there, but there was this baby elephant that was slowly crossing, and his dog, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, it took off at these elephants, and he didn't know what he was doing, but he came out there brave, and, and he stood his ground, and he barked at the, at the big elephant bull, even though it didn't even matter, it didn't even bat an eye at it. But against an animal 150 times its size, without an ounce of fear in his body, this dog just stood up to him. Sometimes we're going to face elephants in our lives, things that just don't go our way. But the best thing we can do is stand our ground and fight the battle. We never know what we're going to approach in the wilderness, but we always need to be ready to fight. Throughout history, we either see the wilderness as beautiful and untamed side, or on the other hand, we see in the Bible that the wilderness is a treacherous place. Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness. The Jews wandered and suffered in the wilderness looking for the promised land. In these readings, the wilderness represents temptation, sin, and the lack of God. 
I want us to reimagine the wilderness, though, as times of struggle and hardships in our lives. After graduation, each and every one of us will experience this struggle. But how we deal with these hardships will be the real test. Our greatest triumphs originate from these failures, but we don't just forget these times in our lives. These experiences will continue to mold and, and become a part of our future. Class of 2020, we are currently in the wilderness. After all this is over, it is our obligation to turn this situation into good. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to, to give you a hope and a future. Class, we are just beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Don't give up. If this virus has taught me anything, it's to be thankful for the blessings you have and never take anything for granted. We have to be grateful for the little things like hanging on the rail at, on Friday nights, watching motivational Monday videos like Shia LaBeouf saying, just do it, or even when the president came to a couple pep rallies. During this time, it is easy for us to dwell on the things we are missing, but now is the time to remember the best is yet to come. As we embark on this new adventure of life, we bring our memories, our friendships, and the knowledge our teachers installed to us. Thank you to the Wiley High School class of 2020 for always showing me a good time. And always remember, take on the wilderness. Thank you and God bless. I always enjoy programs such as this because it gives us an opportunity to show the community what type of quality young people we have at Wiley ISD. It is truly a blessing to be a part of the school district and as every year, uh, it comes with, uh, uh, it's bittersweet. We are very excited for our youngsters and the futures that await them. And at the same time, we were gonna miss them all dear, uh, very dearly. Uh, we'd like to, on behalf of Wiley High School, I would like to say thank you to all the workers of Beltway that have worked so hard along with us to uh, make this program possible today. We'll now have the awarding of scholarships. Nick Witter Memorial Scholarship. On behalf of the Whitaker family, it is with great pride that we present the Nick Whitaker Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is made possible by the generosity of many friends and family. The scholarship is awarded to a senior Wiley student who plans to further his or her education in the fields of theater or music and is selected by the Wiley faculty, counselors, and administrators. Nick graduated from Wiley High School in 2002, where he participated in both theater arts and choir. This year recipient of the Nick Whitaker Memorial Scholarship is Eden Sawley. The Whitaker family is very honored to be able to help Eden further her education in honor of Nick. Jennifer Turner and Sabrina Turner Kaufman Memorial Scholarship. Sabrina and Jennifer Turner were students of the Wiley School District from kindergarten through graduation in 1999 and 2002, respectively. During their years at Wiley, they were well known as leaders in the classroom and community. They both served as drum majors, competed in varsity athletics, participated in UIL meets, and held down jobs. Jennifer was also a newspaper editor in theater and agriculture showmanship. The girls attended Texas Tech University where Sabrina graduated with honors in May of 2004 with a degree in landscape architecture. Jennifer was a junior majoring in linguistics and minoring, and minoring in Asian studies. In August of 2004, they were both killed tragically in an automobile accident along with Sabrina's new husband of one month Adam Kaufman. It is an honor of both the family and school to present this $1,000 scholarship to a deserving leader so their memory can continue to touch the lives of students destined for success. This year's recipient is Morgan Moore. Nelda Sellers Scholarship. 
Nelda Sellers began teaching at Wiley Elementary in 1968 and taught for 24 years. Ms. Sellers left a lasting impression on all of the young lives that she touched. She cared, loved, laughed, and cried for all of her students and only wanted the best for them. Ms. Sellers is the essence of the definition of teacher. Even to the end, she was in the classroom with the students she loved. Her memory lives on in the lives of the people she touched, and it is in her honor that this scholarship was presented to someone that will continue to touch lives in the teaching profession. This year's recipient is Kobe George. Jenny Michelle Ryan Memorial Scholarship. On January 23, 1993, Wiley High School lost one of its beloved students to a disease known as cystic fibrosis. Jenny Michelle Ryan was an inspiration to us all. Her courage gave us strength. Her will to live made us realize what life is all about, and her determination to persevere under all circumstances gave us the will to fight back. In remembrance of Jenny, her family has established a scholarship, and this year, the student to receive this scholarship award is Riley Cassie. Spencer Labrie Memorial Scholarship. Spencer Labrie was a proud Wiley Bulldog from the moment he entered third grade. He was a natural athlete and was willing to work hard to achieve his goals. After graduation, he entered Lubbock Christian University with a position on the baseball team. Spencer decided after his first semester he wanted to be an Air Force pilot and joined the ROTC. He was then offered a full scholarship to Texas Tech University and membership in the Texas Tech Arnold Air Society. Then Thanksgiving weekend, 2012, Spencer and his girlfriend, Jillian, were tragically killed in an automobile accident. Spencer was a unique individual, very driven, whose work ethic and determination made him the successful person that he was. He never gave up, and if he were here, he would want to tell all graduating seniors exactly that. The family would like Spencer's memory to live on by choosing a student that emulates his qualities. It is with great honor that they recognize three Wiley seniors this year. The recipients this year are Karis Christian, Austin Petrie, and Zachary Watson. Raquel Ziprich Memorial Scholarship. Beautiful, talented, artistic, sincere, loyal, generous, and caring. Raquel Andrea Ziprich, she played piano, ran track and cross country, and in her freshman year became a member of the Wiley Bells drill team. As a Bell, she cherished the teamwork and friendships that ensued. Her favorite parts of being a Bell were helping the new dancers, developing routines with others, and traveling out of town away from mom and dad. She was her own harshest critic and demanded perfection of herself while at the same time showing understanding and patience with the shortfalls of others. Raquel planned on graduating and going away to college to become either a psychiatrist because she wanted to help others find happiness or a certified registered nurse anesthesiologist because mom is a nurse and she was terribly proud of mom. Either way, she figured she would be helping others. In that light, it is our privilege to honor Raquel's carried and generous spirit, as well as her dream of college, by presenting the Raquel Andrea Ziprich Memorial Scholarship to one of the Bells graduating uh, college-bound seniors. This year's recipient is Claire McDowell. It is my pleasure to welcome our speaker today, Jared Robinson, Minister of the Word at Southern Hills Church of Christ. Minister Robinson is a graduate of Abilene Christian University with a Bachelor of Arts in Christian Ministry and a Master of Divinity. 
Additionally, he holds a doctorate of ministry from Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. Master, Minister Robinson started preaching for the Southern Hills Church of Christ in 2014. He and his wife, Lauren, have two daughters, 12-year-old Riley and 8-year-old Reese, both of whom attend school in Wiley. Please help me welcome Minister Jared Robinson. Thank you, Madison, for that kind introduction. It is such an honor to, to get to be a part of this special moment uh, in the lives of our, our seniors here at Wiley and their families. It was a, a hot August Abilene afternoon. My ACU college career was just about to begin, and I was in town early to participate in freshman orientation. My family and I had packed up everything I treasured into our, our minivan, and we had had traveled all of the way from Sacramento, California, here uh, to Abilene. And once we arrived, we found the ACU campus, we found the dorm uh, that I was going to be living in, and we then proceeded to go up and down three flights of stairs over and over again until I had moved everything that I treasured from the car into that room. After a couple of days, it was time for my family to leave. I still remember standing out in the maybe dorm parking lot, sweating because it was 103 degrees, watching the heat waves wrinkle the, the image of that van, and my family, as they drove out of that parking lot, turned onto the street and drove away. And I was 17 years old, standing there waving, and there was a part of me that wanted to be ready for that moment. I wanted to be ready uh, to be striking out on my own, and yet I was also fighting back the urge to admit that I really just still wanted my mommy. It took me months to adjust to my new home in maybe dorm room 317. I had to get used to a roommate who was on the track team. He would run for several hours every day. He'd come back. He would take off his sweat soaked t-shirt and drape it over a box fan and turn the fan on high so that later that evening his shirt was dry and our room smelled like, uh, well, I'll leave that up to your imagination. I had to adjust eating in the world famous, to, to eating in the world famous bean instead of gathering around uh, my family dinner table at home. I had to, to make new friends instead of holding on to the friends I'd had since I started school. I had to get used to, to college, classes, and teachers, reading syllabi carefully, and, and knowing that my professors weren't going to remind me of, of the days when tests and papers were due. I, I, had, to, I had to adjust to all kinds of things. I, I had to, to make myself get up every Sunday morning to participate in church instead of sleeping in. I was living in a world full of transition, adjustment, adjustment, and change. And through all of those new experiences, through all of all the new things and the new people, through all of that change, there was one thing that didn't change. There was one thing that was constant. It remained the same. When I lost touch on just about everything and everyone I knew, I was still able to hold on to my faith. In a world filled with uncertainty, especially right now. You and I, we can choose to believe in a God who is absolutely certain. In a world that's always changing on us, we can believe in a God who promises that his character will never change, that he will always stay the same. We can believe in a God who promises to never leave us or forsake us, a God who promises to always love us and always be on our side when we are losing a firm grip on just about everything we know. We can always reach out and take a hold of that faith. In Scripture, we find a young person, just like so many of you in so many ways, who was going through a time of, of excitement and fear. He was going through a time of transition and change and uncertainty. He needed somebody to remind him of the things that would never change. He needed somebody to speak words of confidence and conviction into his, his nervous soul that was, that was full of self-doubt. And so Timothy... He needed his, his mentor, he needed his older brother in the faith, the Apostle Paul, to help him, to give him hope. And these are some of the words that Paul wrote to him in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul wrote, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers and recalling your tears. 
I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. As we all reflect on the many changes that you as graduates have been facing and will face in the near future, each of us has a chance right now to think about our own lives, to reflect on our own experiences. Today, we, we all have the ability to look deep within our hopes and dreams. We have the power to reflect on what we believe and who we believe in. Faith in a world that is constantly changing, faith can help us experience the things that never change. First of all, faith reminds us of the fact that we are always a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Faith carries with it a community. If you have faith, it is precisely because other people had it before you. I mean, I personally relate very closely to the passage that we just read because in my family, my grandmother was the first person to have faith. She passed that faith on to my mother who passed that faith on to me. It's a faith that has taken up residence in my heart. It's, it's something that lives inside of me. And though it may not have been your physical grandmother or your mother, my hope is that all of us have someone in our life who has given us the priceless opportunity to believe. Maybe it's because they took the time to share the story of the gospel with us. Maybe it's because they took the time to live out the gospel story in our presence. Maybe they did both. Regardless of the specifics, if we have faith, we have it because somebody else shared that faith. Seniors, th there may be time in your future when it seems like the faith you have just doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You may find yourself doubting the reality of God and God's purpose for your life. And when those times come, I want you to remember this. You will never be alone when you believe. There's always a believing community surrounding you. There are always other people who are able to believe, even in those times when you might be fighting to believe, struggling to believe. That is something in a world where everything changes that will never change. But there's more. Faith also assures us of the love of God. Faith carries with it a promise. And that promise is that no matter what happens, God will always be there for us. God will always reach out to us and try his best to embrace us, not with judgment, but with loving kindness. How does God do this? Well, there are times when God whispers assurances into our ears and into our hearts. There are times that we have experiences where it is undeniable to us that God is with us. And yet there are many other times when what it really takes is one of God's people to step into our lives and reassure us again. When I first went to college, I, I had lots of people from my home church who, who tried their best to remind me that, that they were thinking of me, praying for me. God was with me sent me care packages and cards. I even had one lady who, who asked me what my favorite candy bar was. I told her Snickers, and so she sent me 30 king-size Snickers bars every month at the beginning of the month. And for the first two months, I ate every single one of those candy bars. But by month three, I was getting to the point where if I saw a Snickers wrapper, I started to feel a little sick. And that's when I made the awesome discovery that in a freshman guy's dorm after curfew, when you're all trapped in there for the night, a king-sized candy bar is just as bad as valuable as a bar of gold. I mean, I traded those Snickers for all kinds of great stuff. Seniors, there will be times ahead when you doubt yourself. There'll be moments when you realize that maybe you've made a bad decision, maybe a really bad decision. And when those moments come, moments of, of regret and second-guessing yourself, remember this. There are people in your life who don't only just believe in God, but they believe in you. They love God, and they love you. And, and not just with any kind of love, but they love you with God's love. No matter what, they will support you, just like Paul supported Timothy. They, they won't only be there for you, but they're going to be pulling for you. Each one of you has someone in your life who cares deeply about who you are. Your victories are their victories. Your, your struggles are their struggles. And in the end, when everything is said and done, you can be sure 
that you can always come to those people and find a piece of home waiting for you in a world where everything changes, that will never change. There's one more thing. Faith will not let us go just anywhere and do just anything. Faith carries with it a calling. As, as I look back on my life, I can see the truth that I have always needed God and people in my life have always needed me to be a faithful servant of God. We live in a world full of people who desperately need to encounter the presence of Christ. And, and there's a good chance that for various people in this world, where, wherever you find yourself in the next weeks, months, years, there will be people around you who desperately need to encounter Christ through you, and you may be the only chance they ever get to encounter Jesus in the flesh. My time at college was filled with moments when, when this was obvious to me. I, I served homeless people at the Salvation Army here in Abilene, not regularly, mind you. In fact, I only did it because a grade in one of my classes depended on it. So for a week, every evening, I went down to the Salvation Army and I served hungry men, women, and children their evening meal. And because I was there just trying to check something off, just trying to do what I needed to do for a class, I missed, I missed the calling. I missed the opportunity that God was trying to help me see, that God was trying to give me to not just be there for credit, but to be there for Christ to be there in a way that would help those people understand just how much God loved them and cared for them. I missed it. And there are nights even now when I wake up thinking about those, those men, women, and children that I met that week, and I wonder what difference God could have made in their lives if I had gathered the courage to really be there for them. Like Timothy, we, we've been given a gift, each one of us. We've been given a calling. We just have to be strong enough to answer that call. We have to be strong enough, confident enough to use that gift. Seniors, that... There's going to be times in the days to come when you doubt yourself, when you, you maybe doubt your usefulness, times when you may wonder if you have enough to offer the world. And when those moments come crashing into you, when they come crashing in on you, I want you to remember that God looks at you and God doesn't choose to reduce you to your struggles or your weaknesses. God doesn't judge you on your very worst moments. God is constantly searching inside of you and, and inside your life for the best of who you can be, the best of what you can offer. God looks at you and sees potential. You are always useful in God's hands. You have everything to offer this world when you offer God your heart. You have everything to offer this world when you offer God yourself. And I promise you, you will transform the people around you for good if you're willing to be who God calls you to be. In a world where all kinds of things change, that will never change. It's different as the end of this school year has been, and it's one for the history books, that's for sure. This time of graduation it is still so incredibly special. It's so very important. And so to all of our graduating Wiley seniors, class of 2020, I want to tell you, everyone in your life, we're so very proud of you. We have bright hopes and amazing dreams for you. And even though we can't know exactly what the, the future is going to look like, we do know that this really challenging season we're in right now, it will eventually pass, and you will be, we will be stronger because of it. And no matter what happens in your life in this coming year, no matter where you're going, no matter what those plans are, we want you to remember these truths. We will always believe, even when you're struggling to believe. We will always believe not only in God's love for you, but in our love for you. And we will always believe that no matter where you are or what you're doing, God can and God will use you to accomplish great things in this world, things that, that are beyond your wildest uh, imagination. Take this moment in. It matters the hard work that you put in to get here, it matters. And it matters not just to you and not just to your family. It matters to all of us. It matters to God. And we can't wait to see what happens next. We're now going to be led in a benediction by Anna Claire. Thank you for those words. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather for this special occasion, even if it is in an unconventional way. 
This is a hard time every year as seniors and families begin to transition into a new stage of life. It's especially, it's especially easy now to feel especially lost, hopeless, and confused. So I ask for your hand to guide us as we make our way through this scary time. We extend our thanks to the brave medical professionals working on the front lines, as well as the scientists searching for a cure and the government officials leading the country through this time of duress. We ask for your divine guidance to wash over them and bring them peace. We pray for the families and business owners affected by the pandemic and ask that you grant them financial security. We pray for the elderly, immunocompromised, and vulnerable of our society and ask you to be with them. Many are facing the fear of sickness separated from their children, parents, and loved ones. Please comfort them in the scary and lonely battle that they are fighting. We ask for healing for patients and families affected directly by COVID-19. Bring peace and hope to those suffering from the grief of loss. Give us the patience to sit still and trust in your will as this passes. Although there are many things uncertain, we know that you reign sovereign over all and the world remains in your control. Bless the senior class of 2020 and light our way as we each walk the path that you have set for us. Let us have eyes to see your blessings, ears to hear your voice, and hearts to follow your way. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.